Absolutely, Amy. As you mentioned, a little boy found on the side of the road. People here are simply asking a number of questions. And I can tell you, Amy, that police really have been investigating around the clock since this boy's body was discovered. In fact, we're along Route 4 and Route 4 and Route 4. And you can see behind me that state police have set up their headquarters here as they continue this investigation. Appears to be between four and six years old, uh, male, uh, short, wavy, blonde hair, uh, blue eyes. Police just recently released this computer-generated image of the little boy. People say people close to, investigators say people close to the child come up with a story to tell police it may be a lie. But in this case, four days in, investigators are still completely in the dark. No name, no story. Just a darling boy whose body was left in the woods, not a soul claiming him. NCIS was brought in after the lone witness who spotted the navy blue truck remembered something else. The witness in this case observed some type of naval insignia embossed in or around the license plate. The possible naval connection combined with the fact that no one in South Berwick or the entire state seems to recognize this boy makes investigators think perhaps he belongs to a military family new to the area and not embedded yet in the community. Also the blanket and the jacket the boy was wearing suggest a possible military connection. It's like an army green, an old army green, but it's, it's a fleece blanket. Um, it could be. I mean, those are, those are the things we're looking at. The camouflage the child's wearing. Um, you know, he's got that aviator shirt on. His body was discovered. In fact, we're along Route 4, and you can see... Four days in, investigators are still completely in the dark. The end of an intense manhunt. A SWAT members handcuff and escort 28-year-old Adam Matos, a suspect in the deaths of four people and the disappearance of a four-year-old autistic boy. Matos told reporters he's innocent. Did you Where kill you those four people? No. No, you didn't, no, you kill, didn't kill them? No. Who did? I don't know. Why were you running away? The search for Matos and the boy... Matos told reporters he's innocent. Did you Where kill you those four people? No. No, you didn't, no, you kill, didn't kill them? No. Who did? I don't know. Why were you running away? Did you, you kill you those four people? Them? No. No, you didn't, no, you kill, didn't kill them? No. Who did? I don't know. Why were you running away? And this morning we did find out that he will face the death penalty for those four murders that rocked the community. We also found out that he is going to plead not guilty. Tonight we are getting a look at what may have been the last picture ever taken of Megan Brown alive. This photo, part of the evidence, the state will use against the accused killer, her ex-boyfriend Adam Matos. Investigate Investigators also got shots of a knife they say Matos used to threaten Brown on August 28th and a cut on her hand she allegedly got trying to protect herself. Deputies were searching for Matos, but he wasn't found until after they say he came back and committed the murders. Brown was found shot to death September 4th. Her parents, Gregory and Margaret, were also murdered, as was Nicholas Leonard, who had recently started dating Brown. We also have the newly released court document the state attorney's office filed showing they will seek the death penalty against Matos. This morning, Matos spent less than two minutes in a Pasco County courtroom in front of Judge William Webb. In that time, he answered three questions with four words. Mr. Matos, you swear from the truth. Yes. Would you state your name? Adam Matos. Uh, you confirmed the waiver of speedy trial. Yes. We've heard from Matos before. Right after his arrest, he talked about the autistic son he fled with after the murders, leading to the manhunt that ended in a Tampa hotel room. I love my son, and I hope that he's safe right now. And we also heard him say he was innocent in a jailhouse interview with the Tampa Bay Times. I can say I'm innocent, and I can say I didn't do it, but or, is anybody really going to believe? Traffic's moving again after a driver found shot, shut down a busy highway for more than two hours. Police have reopened Georgia 400 between Haynes Bridge and Old Milton Road in Alpharetta. At Channel 2's Tony Thomas live in Alpharetta tonight with the headaches it caused for so many people. Tony. Yeah, that's right. Normal late night traffic here on Georgia 400 as we look north from Mansell here. But just a couple of hours ago, this was a parking lot as police conducted that full scale criminal investigation. 
traffic just came to a complete stop. So I sat there for about a minute or two. And Vera Johnson says he then did what we saw quite a few drivers resort to off camera. He reversed on the freeway until he got to a ramp and out of the mess. And this was the cause. 400 northbound just under the Kimball Bridge overpass. Alpharetta police say just after 6.30 Wednesday night, a hero unit driver made a gruesome discovery. The female hero operator got out of the vehicle, walked up to the passenger side thinking that she had a stranded motorist and just trying to offer help. And she discovered a deceased male in the vehicle. While police conducted a full criminal investigation, I'm told they don't believe this was random and they're not currently looking for anyone we know that <laughs> while police conducted a full criminal investigation i'm told they don't believe this was random and they're not currently looking for anyone they don't believe this was random and they're not currently looking for anyone we know that the male had a gunshot wound but at that point, everything's preliminary, and we're just looking at everything. And while they did, traffic was diverted off 400 and onto side streets between Haynes Bridge and Old Milton. And Alpharetta and police to tell me they're waiting on an autopsy before releasing any more details on what they believe happened here on Georgia 400 tonight. Live in North Fulton County, Tony Thomas, Channel 2 Action News, Night Beat. Here's the mystery of a missing Fitchburg boy has been solved tonight, and it has come to a tragic end. Good evening, I'm Paula Eben. Thanks for joining us. Remains consistent with that of five-year-old Jeremiah Oliver were discovered in a suitcase-like object off of Interstate 190 in Sterling. Oliver has been missing since September. His mother and her boyfriend both charged in his disappearance. His father, who lives in Connecticut, is in disbelief over the discovery. I'm hoping that it's not him. But I feel it in my heart that it is. How can somebody hurt this little boy and just, and just throw him in the highway? like like he's garbage katie brace is live in fitchburg tonight with more details katie and Paula, investigators say all clues point to the body being that of Jeremiah Oliver. Oliver lived at this house here in Fitchburg until he disappeared. And investigators long believed he was dead. And now they're trying to figure out who killed the young boy. The body is consistent in height and weight with that of Jeremiah Oliver. After months of unanswered questions, investigators are confident they found the body of Jeremiah Oliver. The five-year-old Fitchburg boy was last seen seven months ago. The Worcester District Attorney would not say what led them to discover the body Friday morning, but did say someone tried to hide the body, which was clothed. The blanket-like object and a suitcase-like object. It was found about 40 feet off Route 190 southbound in Sterling. It was found about 40 feet off Route 190 southbound in Sterling. Officers walked shoulder to shoulder they're searching for more clues. Someone probably would have had to pull over just to see the body. Jeremiah Oliver disappeared in September. Authorities were not notified until December. Oliver's mother, Elsa, and her boyfriend, Alberto Sierra, are currently in jail. They are charged with child abuse and other charges in connection with the child's disappearance. Four murders in 11 days. A judge decides Nico Jenkins is responsible for all of them. And this afternoon, the killer told us he doesn't remember committing the crimes. I don't even think those people are dead. It was another round of courtroom drama and it ended with conviction. Good evening, I'm Adrian Whitsett. I'm Melissa Fry. Jenkins insists he never pulled a trigger. Demons, he says, are responsible. Douglas County Judge Peter Battalion rules otherwise, first accepting Jenkins' pleas of no contest and then convicting him of killing Curtis Bradford, Jorge Cajiga Ruiz, Juan Uribe Pena and Andrea Kruger. KTV News Watch 7's Christina Engdahl was in court and joins us live with the details. And guys, a no contest plea still acts as a guilty plea when it comes time for sentencing. So Jenkins still faces execution. He even waived his right to have a jury deliberate whether he should get the death penalty, leaving his fate to a three judge panel. But under oath, Jenkins says his body might have committed these murders, but he says he simply cannot remember them. Now, leaving court. Today, we heard Jenkins say what he says are words from Egyptian gods, even hearing demands from Luf Lucifer. And he says those are the beings, quote, responsible for the murders of four people in August 2013, saying that they would make, they demanded that he make human sacrifices or the demons in his head would kill him.
Katie Brace is live in Fitchburg tonight with more details. Katie. And Paula, investigators say all clues point to the body being that of Jeremiah Oliver. It's found about 40 feet off Route 190 southbound. Four days in, investigators are still completely in the dark. Combined, the officers who shot the suspect have nearly 40 years of experience. Actor Paul Walker of the Fast and Furious franchise killed in a car crash, and he was just 40 years old. Did you Where kill you those four people? No. No, you didn't, no, you kill, didn't kill them? No. Who did? I don't know. Why were you running away? Heard from Matos before, right after his arrest, he talked about... Sheriff's deputies did a welfare check at a home. That's when they discovered the four victims nearby. Driver found shot, shut down a busy highway for more than two hours. Police have reopened Georgia 400. Four murders in 11 days. Good evening, I'm Adrian Whitsett. I'm Melissa Fried. CBS 2's Jessica Schneider is live in East New York with the breaking news. Jessica? Well, Cindy, this has been a massive police scene since 6 o'clock tonight when those two kids were in it, inexplicably stabbed inside this housing complex. You can see police on this scene. Commissioner Bill Bratton has been here throughout the night. And as we speak, officers are all around this complex trying to find the man who committed this terrifying crime.